everyone. Uh, my name is Nick, and I'm on the Vancouver Startup Week team. Uh, first and foremost, I'd just like to take this moment uh, to acknowledge that we are grateful uh, to be virtually gathered here today on Indigenous land, um, regardless of where you are joining us from. I am grateful today to be here um, on the traditional unceded territories of the Musqueam, Salatooth, and Squamish peoples. Um, unceded means these territories were never handed over, sold, or given up by these nations, and currently we are situated on occupied territories. Um, firstly, I'd, I'd like to thank um, all of you for joining us today for Vancouver Startup Week 2021, and welcome to uh, Cybersecure Canada, Strengthening Cybersecurity for Small and Medium Organizations, hosted by Cybersecure Canada. Uh, the first part of this, uh, sorry, this session is part of the Vancouver Startup Week Founder Track, and is proudly supported by Sage Accounting. Uh, Sage knows you didn't start up your business to become an accountant. Uh, sorry to any accountants out there. Uh, Sage Accounting keeps your business organized and running smoothly. Track your clap, track your cash flow, send out invoices, and get paid quickly. Uh, visit the Sage Accounting booth to access free guides and templates uh, for starting your business finances the right way. Plus, get an exclusive VSW discount if you're ready to switch from Excel. Uh, during the session, uh, if any of you have any questions, anyone in the audience has any questions for our speakers, please post them in the Q&A on the Whova session. Uh, you can also upload any questions that you think are particularly important or relevant. And now I'll pass the mic over to Lisa and let her begin. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, appreciate the introduction and thank you for having us um, for Vancouver Startup Week. I just want to make sure that you do see a slide that says Cybersecure Canada on it. Um, I'll assume that Nick will jump in if you don't. So I'm gonna assume that everything is going well. Great, thank you so much. Um, so thank you again for joining me to talk about some key issues in cybersecurity today and how the government of Canada can help you protect your business from cyber threats. So it's really great to have the opportunity to speak to all of you um, um, and raise awareness of cybersecurity issues as well as the federal government's cybersecurity certification program called Cybersecure um, Canada. And what this program is and what I'll be kind of walking us through today is um, it's a voluntary program that's designed to help small and medium organizations in particular. They can be for-profit organizations or nonprofits um, boost their cybersecurity posture by introducing them to 13 cybersecurity controls. But I'll get further into the details of this um, um, a little bit after I introduce myself, um, just to add on to, to Nick's introduction. So I'm an economic advisor for Innovation Science and Economic Development Canada. I'm based in British Columbia. Um, so I look at different sectors of the British Columbian um, economy, including cybersecurity. I'll probably be referring to my place of work as I said, that's the abbreviation um, that we use. So my role with I said is to work closely with the private, public, and nonprofit sectors, as well as the Canadian Center for Cybersecurity to raise awareness of cyber safeguards and um, of the cyber safeguards that organizations can put in place to protect themselves from, from cyber attacks. Um, so moving on to the agenda for today's webinar, um, what we're going to look at first is um, the current cybersecurity posture of SMOs and why cybersecurity is becoming an increasingly challenging problem to address. Then I'll give you a quick overview of what Cybersecure Canada is and how it solves some of the main issues that we're seeing when it comes to cybersecurity. And finally, I'll go through the 13 baseline cybersecurity controls that I mentioned at the start of the webinar. Um, and these really form the foundation of the program. So these would be really a, a key to, to listen into. And then I'll also walk us through how that certification process works and what some of the benefits of certifications are. After that, feel free to ask me any questions. Um, we'll go into a Q&A period where um, I can address any, any things that you would like to know. 
So in order to talk about Cyber Secure Canada, we need to talk about why the program exists. And the main reason it was created is because cyber attacks don't only happen to big companies. They happen to small and medium businesses and organizations every day. According to Statistics Canada, in 2019, 29% of medium businesses and 18% of small businesses reported a cybersecurity incident. So about one third of medium and one fifth of small businesses experienced an incident. And this is pre-pandemic too. So improving the cybersecurity of SMOs is especially important for Canadians and the Canadian economy because SMOs make up 98% of organizations and they employ nearly half of Canada's 16 million workers. So protecting that cybersecurity um, and ensuring business resiliency is going to be really important among these types of organizations. And what's more is that hackers are becoming increasingly sophisticated with 78% of Canadian organizations who are victims of cyber attacks saying they have increased in their sophistication. So why are small and medium organizations, which I'll be referring to as SMOs, being targeted for cyber attacks? Why aren't those big companies getting targeted? Well, they are, but SMOs are at a particular risk for a few reasons. And the first is that the information that hackers want is often less guarded on a small organization's system. And these pieces of information could include credit card credentials, intellectual property, and personally identifiable information, um, such as employee social insurance numbers and banking information. And this personal data is really valuable to hackers. It's being sold on the dark web for as little as $5 for a credit card number, $30 for an entire identity, or up to $1,000 for medical records. And the second reason that SMOs are being targeted is that when smaller organizations partner with larger ones, they can provide back channel access to a hacker's true targets. So there's an example of this that happened in 2014 um, with the store Target. Um, to get to this company, hackers decided to compromise a third party vendor's HVAC system to obtain access to millions of credit card numbers from target customers. So an SMO's partnership with larger companies can put them at risk for cyber threats too. And the third reason that SMOs are being targeted is that due to a lack of resources, smaller organizations are less equipped to handle an attack. SMOs tend to invest less in cybersecurity with 33% of them spending $0 on um, investing in the issue. 56% of SMOs also don't have employees responsible for cybersecurity because it's deemed not a high enough risk. And of course, with limited resources, you might not have that opportunity to invest in um, personnel that look at cybersecurity only. So while many organizations are already experiencing cyber incidents, we are seeing cyber attacks increase in frequency. In the past 12 months, 82% of Canadian organizations reported an increase in overall cyber attack volume. And we're also seeing hackers increasingly targeting SMEs with 71% of cyber attacks targeting organizations with less than 100 employees. And the cost of these attacks can be pretty detrimental to smaller organizations as the average recovery cost is around $50,000. So in addition to that financial loss, um, attacks can also leave businesses pretty vulnerable to reputational damage, 
data breaches, and loss of intellectual property. And all of this combined often results in SMEs who are victim, victims of attacks being forced to shut down. So we know that cyber incidents are growing and that cybersecurity is a hard problem to solve, especially for SMOs that have uh, limited resources. And to address this issue, I said, um, launched Cybersecure Canada in 2018. And this program is meant to um, provide clear, easy to implement and cost-effective steps for helping organizations, like I said, both for-profit and non-profit with less than 500 employees protect themselves from most of the major cyber attacks. So what is this Cyber Secure Canada that I keep talking about? Well, it's a voluntary cybersecurity certification program, which I had mentioned. And to get certified, organizations need to implement 13 baseline cybersecurity controls that have been put forward by the Canadian Center for Cybersecurity. The program supports Canada's national cybersecurity strategy, which was also announced in 2018. And it includes measures to mitigate cybercrime, foster innovation and economic growth, and develop Canadian cyber talent. And several federal departments are collaborating to deliver this strategy. I said is one of them, but so is Public Safety Canada, the Communication Security Establishment, and the Department of Defense. And the Cyber Center, as we call them, is part of the Communication Security Establishment and is Canada's trusted source on cybersecurity and is also supporting this program. So what's more is that Cybersecure Canada is working with the Standards Council of Canada to incorporate those 13 cybersecurity controls um, into a national standard that will help even more strongly ensure SMOs have access to a reliable cybersecurity framework. So in short, Cybersecure Canada was designed to help SMOs improve their cybersecurity baseline, educate all Canadians about cybersecurity, increase consumer confidence in the digital economy. And it does this by providing cost-effective certification in cybersecurity that's easy to implement for non-technical specialists. Moving on to the certification process of Cybersecure Canada and the details around how that works. The first thing an SMO will need to do in order to get certified is implement those 13 cybersecurity controls. And I will be going over those controls in more detail shortly. Once an organization puts those controls in place, then they can submit a request to get audited by a certification body. And a certification body is an organization separate from the government that's been accredited by the Standards Council of Canada to administer these cyber secure audits. They're usually companies that specialize in IT and cyber security. Now, once the certification body completes its audit of the organization, it then determines whether those 13 controls were implemented effectively. And if so, it issues an official Cybersecure Canada certification mark that's valid for two years and comes in the form of a watermark that organizations can put on their website. And I'll mention that the reason the certification lasts two years is because cybersecurity um, and technology is constantly changing. Hackers are becoming increasingly sophisticated. So cybersecurity is something that we do have to keep building, not something that we can implement in just one go. All right, so the security controls. I'll elaborate on what these 13 baseline cybersecurity controls put forward by the Canadian Centre for Cybersecurity actually are. I'll give you a bit of a high level overview of each of them. 
Um, but if you do want more details and more, want more details on the, around the technical aspect of them, um, there is a publication on the Canadian Center for Cybersecurity website um, that, that goes through everything that you'll need. All right, so the first control is to develop an incident response plan. And this is a plan for how you respond to cybersecurity incidents. And if you have a plan, you can quickly respond um, to incidents and restore critical systems and data. You can also keep service in interruptions and data loss to, to a minimum. Second control, patch operating systems and applications. When software issues or vulnerabilities are identified, vendors release patches to fix bugs, address those vulnerabilities and improve usability and performance. So you can enable automatic patches to solve these issues pretty quickly as they arise. Third, use stronger user authentication. You can implement user authentication policies that balance security and usability. You can ensure that your devices authenticate users before they gain access to your systems. Four, backup and encrypt your data. You can copy your information and critical applications to one or more secure locations, such as the cloud or an external hard drive. So if you do this and a cyber incident or a natural disaster happens, then these copies can help you continue your business activities and prevent data loss. Five, configure your devices securely. Take the time to review your device's default settings and make modifications as required. At a minimum, it's recommended to change your default passwords, turn off location services, and disable some unnecessary features. Uh, six, enable security software. Activate some firewalls and install antivirus and anti-malware software on your devices to thwart malicious attacks and protect against malware. Seven, train your employees. Tailor your training programs to address your organization's cybersecurity protocols, policies, and procedures. Having that informed workforce can really reduce the likelihood of cyber incidents. Eight, secure mobile devices. Ensure your employees can only use approved applications and download those applications from um, trusted sources. Nine, establish basic perimeter defenses. You can defend your networks from cyber threats by, for example, using a firewall uh, to defend against any outside intrusions. 10, secure cloud and outsourced services. Get to know a service provider before you contract them and make sure that that service provider has measures in place to meet your security requirements and your security needs. 11, secure websites, encrypt sensitive data, um, ensure your certificates are up to date and use strong passwords on the back end of your site. 12, access control and authorization. Employees should only have access to the information that they need to do their jobs. And each user, user should have their own set of login credentials as well. And 13, secure your portable media. Storing data using a portable device such as a USB is very convenient, but it can be prone to loss or theft. So maintaining an inventory of those assets and adding extra security um, around those assets such as encryption can really help prevent um, some very common cyber attacks. So those are the 13 baseline controls. And once those are in place, as mentioned, ISID can put you in touch with a certification body to get the audit that will lead to certification. 
There are currently four certification bodies that organizations can choose from when they're participating in the program. And these include Bulletproof Solutions, Cybersecurity Canada, WATSEC, and Source Tech IT. Now, there are multiple certification bodies um, because they all offer audits, but they also offer slightly different services. So we have many bodies to ensure that the SMOs um, or the needs of SMOs are, are met. There is a cost to Cybersecure Canada certification. Um, and the reason that there's this cost is that it's expected your business will grow and increase its revenue as its cybersecurity posture and business resiliency strengthens. And this cost is set by the certification body. So it really does vary depending on the size and the complexity of the audit and the organization. But when we're talking about the cost of the audit, we're usually looking at something within the range of two to $5,000. So it is an upfront investment, but it's something that your business will definitely benefit from. Um, and again, if we look back at how much it can cost your business, if you do encounter a cyber incident around $50,000, this investment is, is definitely a good one. And I also wanted to highlight some of the benefits of receiving a Cybersecure Canada certification mark. This mark can do two main things for an organization. Um, first, it shows that your organization's been recognized by the government of Canada in um, successfully putting key cyber safeguards in place. So that's good. And then second, it also shows your customers, clients, investors, and partners that their sensitive data is safe when working with or purchasing from you. So a lot of benefits from being Cybersecure Canada certified that don't only come with um, increasing your cybersecurity posture, um, but it also improves reputation and um, consumer confidence as well. Now, while there is a cost to the audit, and while these 13 controls um, can be a bit of a process to implement, we do have a lot of free resources from ISED and the Canadian Center for Cybersecurity um, that we've put out to help organizations learn about their cybersecurity gaps and how those 13 cybersecurity controls can help them. So we currently do have a free e-learning course that helps organizations identify cybersecurity threats as well as cybersecurity best practices um, and opportunities to improve that cybersecurity as well. And that course can be currently found on the Canadian Center for Cybersecurity website. Um, there are a couple other initiatives from the government of Canada. This one from Public Safety um, called Get Cyber Safe. And this um, information about this program can also be found on the Public Safety Canada website. But what it does is it teaches some, some tips and tricks around um, how individuals can increase their own cybersecurity um, and things around password protection um, and encryption that could be very helpful as well. The Cyber Center also has a variety of free resources on cybersecurity. That includes a publication that uh, details the 13 baseline cybersecurity controls, as well as a lot of other documents that go into detail around these controls um, and other aspects of cybersecurity that could help your organization. So highly recommend that you take a look at that website as well. And in the coming months, which is what this slide um, that I have up right now is showing, we will be putting out even more free e-learning materials that will provide um, some more in-depth outlines of each cybersecurity control. Um, and this is going to help your organization receive some more low-cost ways of accessing information around cyber safeguards that are needed to protect your sensitive data. So very quickly, these controls will be free and publicly available on ISED's website. They will be available in both official languages. Um, each module 
will be less than 60 minutes, depending on the complexity of that content, contain various levels of interactivity, which will help um, really enhance the learning um, and application of those 13 controls. And it will be vetted um, and developed with the guidance of a cybersecurity expert. So you know that these e-learning modules um, really come not only government backed, but cybersecurity expert backed as well. All right, well, in summary, Cybersecure Canada is designed to help your organization increase its cybersecurity posture by introducing you to some easy to implement, cost-effective cybersecurity safeguards. And not only will it help protect your organization from attacks, but it should increase, should increase the trust um, from your clients, customers, investors, and partners that are working with you since they'll know that their information is protected as well. So that is the end um, of my webinar and I'd be happy to take any questions from the audience. Wow, thank you, Lisa. That was, that was a great presentation, very insightful. I had no idea just how much uh, small to medium organizations are targeted by, by cybersecurity attacks like that. And I didn't realize the cost that like comes with it. That an average of like 50,000, as you had said, is a lot of money for a, for a small to medium organization. Um, yeah. And uh, <laughs> I, I guess um, one question for me, I was just wondering what are like the most common ways that these attacks happen or these data breaches happen in, in, in organizations um, that mm -hmm. you're aware of? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. Um, I don't have exact numbers off of the top of my head for most common types of cyber attacks, um, but phishing is definitely one that happens really frequently. So phishing emails that you'll um, probably quite frequently see. Um, and these are challenging because they can be masked um, as legitimate emails very well. Um, Occasionally, I receive practice phishing emails um, to that is are, are run by by um, my my department to help us identify cybersecurity issues, and it is very difficult to um, differentiate uh, phishing emails from legitimate ones. Um, so those are one of the most common um, types of attacks, for sure. Definitely, um, yeah. I've been like lately uh, definitely thinking a lot about cybersecurity. I mean, because um, I go to SFU and we've had, last year we had a, a data breach where like almost all student data was stolen, like personal uh, address and, and all that, everything like except the, um, like any credit card or banking or social insurance info basically <laughs> um, was all breached and then that happened again the like the year before as well so twice over the last two years they've had pretty pretty bad um data breaches mm -hmm. which uh <laughs> everyone's been been curious about like how how that's happened with um, an organize like such a, a large i guess uh, organization like a, a large university so yeah uh, or or i guess i can see now though why like why they would be targeted if, if on in general, small to medium organizations don't have um, the same security as larger organizations. So, um, it it looks like uh, we don't have any questions so far. Um, so, if anyone has any, anyone in the audience still has anything they'd like to ask, now is your chance. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. If there are no questions, I do have. Um couple FAQs that I can run through if we have some time that might be of interest to the audience while um, the audience uh, thinks through whether or not they, they have some questions for me. Um, so something that we do often get asked about is um, whether or not there is funding available for organizations who would like to become Cybersecure Canada certified. So I did mention that there was that cost associated with it. And 
costs around cybersecurity can be really challenging for, for smaller organizations, um, especially small businesses. And um, we do recognize that, that a few thousand dollars is along with the implementation costs can be challenging. Um, so right now we are working with um, other federal government departments to identify um, certain funding resources. And we're very optimistic that we'll, we'll have um, some supports coming in for small and medium organizations soon to improve their cybersecurity posture. Um, there has been a couple um, pockets of funding, not in the BC region, but in the Quebec um, and Atlantic provinces where um, a few hundred uh, small and medium organizations are being supported with a few thousand dollars to improve their cybersecurity practices. So we are hoping to, to get some more financial support in place. Um, but right now we are also offering those free resources that I mentioned, um, and we'll be coming out with more free resources around improving cybersecurity very soon. Um, what are some other FAQs that I have? We do also often get asked um, about why to choose Cybersecure Canada over some of the other um, cybersecurity certification programs. Um, so in particular, I'm talking about um, the National Institute of Standards and Technology Certification. So they have a very well-known um, certification um, standard. And then there's also the International Standards Organization that has um, an infor information security management system certification as well. So these are very well-known and used very widely um, internationally. So people do often ask us, why Cybersecure Canada when we can go another route? And in the context of small and medium organizations, um, Cybersecure Canada works really well. It's a very simple 13-step process um, that gives cost-effective ways of um, protecting from most cyber attacks. Other programs or other um, uh, standards around cybersecurity can be quite challenging for smaller organizations to access. Implementing those controls can be quite expensive. Um, and often though other programs are targeted toward um, larger businesses that have more resources to, to follow those, those particular cybersecurity standards. So Cybersecure Canada is a really, really great start for um, organizations that are looking to improve their cybersecurity posture and protect from, from most attacks. And if over time, a Cybersecure Canada organization that has been certified is um, interested in pursuing more stronger levels of, of cybersecurity, they're very well positioned to do so quite easily. Um, so that is, is a question that we get fairly often as well. Um, one last FAQ that I'll touch on is um, around how to get kind of started um, and then how to move on from to, toward the audit process. So um, first around getting started, we have those e-learning materials that I had mentioned. Um, and we will be releasing the other e-learning modules in, um, in, in a few months. So that all of these resources is a really good place to go to start kind of working through those 13 controls. And then once your organization feels like it has a strong um, or has successfully implemented those, we have a portal on ICED's website, on the Cybersecure Canada website um, that organizations can register for. And through that portal, ICED will reach out to you and um, connect you with the certification body um, that will work best for you. So it's very easy on the Cybersecure Canada portal um, or the website rather, there is a link that says get certified. You click that link, you sign up, enter your contact information and um, we'll all we'll kind of take it from there. So that is the process and, and those are the 13 controls. Um, and those are the FAQs that, that I have 
um, prepared that are most most often asked. I don't think there are any more questions. I don't see any in the, the chat, Nick, do you? It looks like we got one on Hoover, um here, so uh, I'll just read it out. Um, there are various media stories about bad guys seizing control of data and ransoming the keys back to the business for Bitcoin. Uh, is this something that you can comment on? Okay. Or what do you, what do you think about ransomware attacks? That's a very good question. Um, I don't think it's something I can comment on um, broadly. I definitely can speak to um, how the program can kind of work with or work on um, protecting against those those types of attacks are kind of more, yeah, complex and sophisticated attacks, even though we we have only only thirteen um, controls that we're putting forward. but I'll kind of swing a little bit and say with Cybersecure Canada and um, ransomware or other types of attacks, something that our program um, is able to do is not only provide security controls that focus on IT um, or the more technical side um, of cybersecurity protections, but also focuses on operational issues such as training employees or developing an incident response plan. So when it comes to um, a variety of types of attacks that vary in their sophistication, you're kind of covered from all sides, both tech and also some of the, the kind of human errors that you might um, encounter with cybersecurity as well. Awesome. Well, thank you, Lisa. That looks like um, that's all we have for questions. Um, okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I'll just say um, if anyone has any other questions and um, they would like to talk more about Cybersecure Canada, feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to talk further about the program and um, connect people with others as needed as well.